Television Network, TSPN, and now TSPN presents Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. Good morning and welcome to Love. That was a quick good morning. Good morning and welcome <laughs> to Love, Hope, and Faith. My name is Heather Murdoch and um, I'm so uh, happy that you joined us today. I have a great show planned, really exciting guest that's so full of, 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 of the love of God and uh, she's very excited to share her message today. Before I get to that, I'd love to encourage you. I, I love to share, um, you know, what the Lord's been showing me in my own life, my own walk with Him and I, I want to get to some scripture in a minute. But before that, I want to just let you know what Love, Hope, and Faith is all about. And this is a show that's all about Jesus, that no matter where you've been, there's hope. And I mean that. No matter where you've been, it doesn't matter what you've been through, it doesn't matter um, where you've came from, um, it doesn't matter who you think you are, um, Jesus, um, He is the one true hope. And no matter where you've been, there is hope in Him, and He can transform lives. He does transform lives, and it's not something you arrive at overnight. It's a journey, it's a process, and I'm just thrilled to be able to share my transformation process with you, as well as the guests I have on my show that are willing to share their hearts and how God has changed their life, and um, it's just awesome to be, be a part of that. And I always have three prayers, um, kind of boiled it down, uh, how, how I could really convey uh, my hope for the show. And the first is, I really want people to be encouraged. We need encouragement. This is a tough road to walk, this life is, and we need encouragement. And I love to share the encouragement that being a believer can, can provide. Um, and so I just hope you're encouraged through the stories you hear here. <laughs> you hear here. Um, and I really pray that you're encouraged uh, with hope and with um, um, faith through the show. I really pray that you could be um, equipped with um, tools and, and ideas and concepts and biblical truth that you would be equipped to uh, live out your faith, um, to go deeper with the Lord. And I also pray that you would be empowered, empowered with the Holy Spirit because He's here. And um, if you're a believer, He empowers us. And I really pray that you would be empowered with, with God's truth, with His Word that we share here on the show. And those are really my three things, encouraged, equipped, and empowered. And um, if, if I can... If I can be a part of that or if God can use the show to do that, I am just so thrilled to be a, to be a part of that process. And um, anyway, I've been reading in Luke. Um, you may remember if you watched the show at all, I was reading in the Old Testament for quite a while and some of the minor prophets. But I just started reading Luke and um, many of us at our church are reading it right now. So it's kind of fun to have the conversation about what we're learning in Luke. And um, one of the things that occurred to me, I just want to read a little bit here, uh, is for, starting with... Um, Luke 4 1 and talking about how when Jesus was tempted in the desert and he had just been baptized by John the Baptist and um, and the skies parted and God the Father said this is my son whom I am well pleased and now he's being led into the desert and it says Jesus full of the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil he ate nothing during those days and at the end of them he was hungry he was very hungry he imagine not eating for 40 days the devil said to him if you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it could all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And this is really going to go with our show today. <clears throat> the devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, and the devil then quotes scripture, he says, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. So meaning the angels are going to protect him from, if he jumped off that temple, they, off the roof, he would not be hurt. Jesus answered, it says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. And that is of 413. And I really want you to hear that. When the devil had tempted, or I'm sorry, when the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him for an opportune time. And I read the scripture many times, and it, all of a sudden I really saw clearly verse 13 because what it says here is that the enemy will tempt you when you're most vulnerable he will continue to tempt you are you hungry are you angry are you lonely are you tired any of those things and more those are your vulnerable times and he will continue to tempt you but do not be discouraged and do not be fooled because you have the power of the living God in you if you are a believer you have the power of the living God 
And being tempted is not the sin. It's when we act on that temptation that is sin. And even Jesus was tempted, as you hear, heard here. So do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. And the moment, the moment that we turn our eyes back to God, the moment that we pray to him and call out to him for help, the moment that we turn away, repent, turn away from, from, from that temptation, we are fully empowered with God's uh, truth to, to resist temptation. The, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So I just want us to be encouraged. And yeah, the enemy can mess with our lives. He can cause uh, havoc or at least attempt to. But really, um, he, we, he only has the power that we give him. Because we have, we have Jesus, and he is our victor, and he has already conquered that battle. He's already won that battle. And we just got to keep our eyes on him, because when we keep our eyes on him, um, then we are, then we are um, changed, and we are strengthened, and we are able to resist. Um, and we just got to follow him. And uh, he will take us through any fire and lead us through any fire. So I just want to remind us all that um, the devil may try to tempt, but he has no power over us and um, and uh, that he is always looking for that time to tempt you. So beware of that. Be on guard and, um, and, and know that he's, he's, he's watching. But it's okay because we have Jesus. So I hope that encouraged you like it encouraged me. Um, um, stay strong. <laughs> and today, I love how the Holy Spirit works because <laughs> the verses, you know, that I've been praying about and all that, really, um, and, and reading in Luke, and then speaking with my guest, who I'm going to introduce right now, Shasta Garcia. Hi, Shasta. Hello, Good to have you this morning. <laughs> and my, my, my viewers may know that, remember that you've been on before, I think it was like a year ago. It's been quite some time. <laughs> we were talking on the phone last night, and all the things that, that I'm passionate about, you're passionate about. We yeah. have the same heart, and it's I love how God unites us. It's uh, definitely heavy on my heart lately. Yeah, exactly. And I love the scripture that says, um, man does not live on bread alone, and, um, and it says, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And I think it's funny you say that, because in John it says, you know, um, he who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. And yeah. I feel like if you saying that is that, you know, um, we can't rely on the worldly things to give us the complete satisfaction. And I think that's some things that, just the smallest things, like, you know, always wanting to have a better car, a better house, just different things like that, mm -hmm. those are worldly things. And I believe that God will provide for us, and that if we're focusing on those things, if we don't circumcise our heart, then there's no room for God to completely fill us, because there's those worldly things in your heart, and yeah. there's just not room for Him to completely do In our it. flesh, we tend to idolize and worship other things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're made to worship. You know, we are made to worship. Yeah. That's how God made us. And so it's natural that we are going to worship, period, things, mm -hmm. idols, you know, whether, like you said, whether yeah. it be um, our reputations, money, um, other people, whatever it is that we idolize, that we put on a pedestal in our life, that we pursue, um, we're meant to pursue God to that level. But mm -hmm. we oftentimes, you know, pursue other things. And it's, they don't fill us. Yeah. Like you said, they don't fill us. Uh, we might think it yeah. does. It might be a little temporary, you know, pleasure, but it's not... It's not even close to the power of you know what Christ can do to completely satisfy us because yeah. even uh, Christians nowadays haven't even touched the surface of the satisfaction that God can give us because once you you know start the transformation process your desires and pleasures and everything start changing and um, God will really you know stir that in your heart and I think that's incredible that's kind of what I'm going through right now is that I um, last time I was on your show I don't think I was fully fully dedicated to God and I don't think that I died in myself yet mm -hmm. and um, that's the walk that I'm on right now, mm -hmm. Shasta's journey. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly, good. Well, you know, you mentioned something about uh, our hearts, and, you know, our it's like, from my experience personally, the Lord has worked from the inside out. So he started mm -hmm. from deep within, you know, healing and, and um, healing and building things deep within that were hurt in me, broken, you know. Yeah. And then little by little it starts, it starts coming out, and little by little your behavior starts changing. But sometimes it takes a long time for your behavior to catch up to your heart. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what's happening with you. It's like he's been changing your heart, Shasta, and now it's starting to be even more evident in your behavior. It's catching yeah. up, you know. And that's for all of us. I agree. And, um, you know, it's funny because I've been through a lot of trials and tribulations lately. And there was a time in my life where, you know, everybody has a story and a testimony for a reason. You know, yeah. those people need to share those. Those are important because nobody can deny your testimony because mm -hmm. that's what happened to you. And uh, I never really had anything like major happen to me like at all. I mean, I've always had, you no, know, not a perfect life, but I've definitely had pretty much everything in place. And, mm -hmm. um... It just things have been happening lately, and um, it just makes me more faithful to God. Yeah. 
uh, because I know that there's going to be blessings that come out of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like the bad things are, you know, God's doing whatsoever because I know that he suffers with me. Um, and I know he'll never forsake me. And uh, he takes those, you know, horrible things and makes them into beautiful masterpieces. I mean, look what he did to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. mean, we were really Actions corrupted, to beauty. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 And um, being dead in sin, I wanted to discuss that a little bit. Yeah. Before we go there, because I know you have some key points you yeah. want to talk about yeah. today, which is so awesome because I, you had, God's been putting this message on your heart and then I called you yeah. to see if you would be on my show and it was like totally that you'd been praying about opportunity to share mm -hmm. this and then I called you having no idea that you were praying about that so of course God is amazing how he works. Yeah I was telling God and I was like okay so you're stirring in my heart you're having all these things I can barely operate I have so much on my mind and he's completely changing everything because I'll be in a conversation with somebody and all that's going through my head is God 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 yeah, God yeah, exactly. and uh, I think it's incredible because I've never actually thought that way nothing actually like everything revolved around God, but I'm like excited to really, really dig deep into this journey, and I'm so excited for that. And it's funny, because I've already talked to you about this, but I think it would be funny to share, is that as soon as we get off the phone, I um, opened up the book that I'm reading, and it literally said, Dear Heather, thanks for calling me tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and this will show the book. Oh, yeah. It is A Call to Die, A Call to Live, and Follow Me. So it's really about um, how you have to truly die in yourself to um, truly come alive. Mm -hmm. And that people can see. This is a, an author is David Platt. He's an author and pastor, and he's amazing. Um, and him and Francis Chan do a lot of work together, and I'm a big fan of Francis Chan. But this is a, I'm sure this is a great book. He also wrote a book called Radical, which is really awesome. you got to read Radical. I it will. will We're it will blow books. your mind. Yeah, <laughs> it will blow your mind. And this is about getting out of our comfort zones and dying to self, like you said, mm -hmm. and following hard after Jesus. Because, and this is one thing I, I don't want people to think, because I sit here on my show, and it's all you know, talk about encouragement, and, and, and Jesus is the encourager, and he is the comforter, and he is our strength, and he is our champion, yeah. and our victor, and all those things, and our God, but it doesn't mean that our walk is going to be easy. It doesn't. And that there's going it, to be suffering. You have yeah. to be willing to have suffering in your life, because there's still, this world is so full of sin, and um, all these different type of things, and you can't necessarily get away from it. But when you truly die to yourself, you're walking with Jesus with you. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, you can overcome those temptations. You can overcome those sins. And, you know, God will truly start to transform your heart and your life by, you know, changing the desires you want, the pleasures you want, and truly giving you a greater satisfaction than you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, these worldly mm -hmm. things are just temporary. And, yeah. um, like, I want to go over, too, was, um, like, not to wait. Mm -hmm. you, you never know when it's your time to go, and I would really want to be completely satisfied with where I am with God right now, because when I go face-to-face -face with God, you know. You want to be, yeah. yeah, we'll talk more about that. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith. My name is Heather Murdoch, and I'm here with Shasta Garcia. And Shasta, you're from Calaveras County. Sure, yeah. Well, and so well, not my whole life, but yeah, for that's where you live. So you're right next door, and um, I'm from that. Area. Well, not from either, but I grew up in that area. <laughs> So, but, um, and so I, I, you have a lot right now. God is really doing a work in you right now. But I want to take it back, I think, to where this kind of really, you started noticing the change. And I think that was on your mission trip. So, why don't you yeah. tell us about that? When was this mission trip and where did you go? Um, to start off with the whole testimony behind the mission trip is I uh, went out to frozen yogurt, random, right? I went out to frozen yogurt with my two guy friends, Sam and Avery, and we have been discussing to go on a mission trip for quite some time. And uh, we just didn't know when the right time was or where we were going to go, but we knew we had it on our heart. And we ended up with the decision to go to Africa. Literally, we got all the papers and everything like this. and. Uh, my parents thought I was crazy. My, my yeah. was crazy. <laughs> and uh, I knew immediately that it just wasn't, I mean, after a few more prayers after that, I just knew it wasn't his plan. I ended up getting a phone call um, from the same people who were, you know, making the whole Africa trip happen, uh, that there was a Mexico trip coming up in about two, three weeks, and they said the money's due in two days. And so I was like, okay, all right. Well, um, and they're like, well, and we're not really sure how many spaces there are. So I said, okay, well, give me a call back tomorrow. Let me know how many there are, and I'll pray about it. And, you know, if I'm supposed to go, then he'll open up that door for us to go. And I got the call next day saying there's, there's exactly three spots left. And I made a GoFundMe account, and I had 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more than I actually needed within a day. So, I mean, God provided tremendously, and it was just such a blessing to be able to go there. And um, when we went there, it was just incredible. I learned so much. As you know me, mm -hmm. um, I'm a communicator. Yeah. Yes, that's a gift from God. I, I love to meet new people. I love talking with them. Um, that's just something that I've always, you know, I've always been good at. And going to Mexico, I don't really know Spanish that mm -hmm. well. And so there was definitely a communication barrier there. And that definitely frustrated me quite a bit. Um, yeah. But God really showed me throughout the week of, you know, really serving there and going there with a the servant's heart was that there's so much more than just communication that I could do. Because we, sh we can show love and... Um, all these different things through our actions as well. Exactly. I think it's actually more important to mm -hmm. through our act. Well, maybe not more important, but equally But, but important. it really is. It yeah. really is because there's some people that you're going to meet that don't necessarily want to hear the Word of God. Mm -hmm. But if you show them through your actions exactly. that, you know, you're still joyful throughout all the stuff that you're going through and that, you, you know, you're faithful and you have hope in God. And um, I, don't, I don't necessarily, like, I'm not denying Him or anything by not, you know, preaching the Word to people. Well, sometimes He says, but shut your mouth and don't yeah, talk about yeah. me. Just love people. And sometimes, mm -hmm. even in the Bible, mm -hmm. that um, it talks about, um, like, the sword. Mm -hmm. If you use your sword at the wrong time, it's like cutting off somebody's ear. And mm -hmm. it's like going to close that for the rest of time. So, like, if God, you know, really doesn't soften their heart before, then yeah, it's exactly. not a good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I met so many incredible little kids, and they just really, I went there... Um, and I thought I was going to bless them, but no, no, no. It was completely the other way around. Exactly. I was completely blessed, and I realized how much I adore kids. I, I adore them. I want to have a family one day. And I just love kids so much. And I met this little girl named Angelica, and I think she truly helped me change the way that I love. Um, and not only that, but going there, I was really worried about life. And I, I know that's like a weird thing to be worried about, but um, I went on this daycare route. And this little girl came on the bus, and she was crying. We went out into the cities, and it was a free daycare facility that they offered. And um, this little girl comes on the bus, and she's crying. And I'm like, okay, God. <laughs> all right. And out of all the people she could have sat next to, she sat next to me. Mm -hmm. And I looked over, and I just immediately saw something that God saw. I, I, di I didn't see her as a way. But you could literally see the lice in her hair. Okay. And so I took all those worries and everything, and I completely just... We just forgot about it because that, that's still a worldly thing. Like ice and everything. Like you, I wanted to love her how Christ would love her, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Christ would not even, not even look at would her. Would not shun her. No, would not, not at all. Her, yeah. So I didn't do that, and um, you know, God protected me from all that, and yeah. I was fine. But I, I'm really thankful that I did that because um, being able to comfort her in a way that you know God would, and um, really. You know, just loving on her, and I feel like that—that's you know, God really prepped my heart for that. And uh, like I said, there was times where I would be with 13 kids, and uh, you know, by myself. And uh, you know, He really gave me the energy and everything like that. On the mission trip, I actually sprained my ankle, and I'm so stubborn and didn't go to the clinic. And it was swollen and all bruised, and don't ask me how I did it because I don't know. But <laughs> I think for a fact that I kind of looked at it as. I was doing so much, and I felt like the devil was trying to slow me down. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to the clinic. And, yeah. I, uh, and I just stuck it out, stuck it out, kept doing even more and more. Each day I'd do more, and uh, I went home, and it was, it was still messed up. But I didn't care because I didn't let a thing get in the way, and I, I feel like I totally accomplished what God sent me there to do. And he changed my life. He transformed me in every way possible, you know, coming back and... Um, there was not a culture shock going into Mexico mm -hmm. because he already prepared my heart for that. But coming back to America was when the culture shock really started mm -hmm. to happen mm -hmm. because the worldly things really started to get on my nerves. I, I really did because we stayed in Southern California and all these things, just the people and the way they act and the way they talk and the just, we're greedy. So we are self-absorbed. So, yes, yeah. we are. Mm -hmm. um, self-righteous, you know, self-fulfillment, all those kinds of things. That really, really bothered me. Mm -hmm. like, I didn't want to be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I want to kind of share something that I've been um, really stressing on after I came back is making every day a mission trip. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this little thing to kind of go over kind of what I got out of the whole mission trip and everything. So it says, my experience on a short-term mission trip to Mexico was fascinating and such a blessing. For a few days, I got to explore a foreign country with a group of believers and focus on ministry work at the orphanage. We laughed together as we ate strange but delicious foods, mm -hmm. and while we tried to speak the language, I also... Um, 
wept at the witness of extreme poverty and poverty. And on the mission trip, I also suffered through an injury after spraining my ankle. As nice as it was to return to the comforts of my home, there was also a huge letdown. I was back in the real world, and there was a peace I felt when I was doing kingdom work. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it faded, and I had to return to the same routine in which I felt um, was so repetitive. Um, things that I didn't want to be doing, and it didn't really have eternal value. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I finally um, saw that it's possible to prolong the excitement and peace, and life can be one continuous mission trip. And uh, so, do you remember the verse that many of us have heard when we first believed that the thief comes to only steal, kill, and destroy? And I have come to that you may have life and have it abundantly. Well, the life God has for us is one of abundance, and it is meant to be filled and not repetitive. And He wants us doing things that has eternal impact, and He wants us busy expanding His kingdom in one way or another today and every day. I finally understand that this doesn't mean that every Christian should quit his job or her job and move to a foreign country, but it does mean that we need to figure out how to make each day count for his purposes in the scripture. Uh, Paul says, no soldier gets entangled in the civilian per pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. Don't most of us do the opposite? We busy ourselves with civilian purposes and occasionally mm -hmm. jump into the battle when we feel compelled. Mm -hmm. But kingdom service is something we visit on mission trips, day of service, or prayer meeting, or at church. But um, we often get tangled in the civilian lifestyle and um, it just becomes accepted and it's just a complete norm. And it, uh, it is even like applauded in this world and so long as we can point to uh, some occasion of kingdom activity then we feel like we've completed something I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but scripture says differently our lives would be more abundant if we could figure out a way to be on the battlefield every single day. You may be looking at your life and assuming you have no options um, because a person with bills and family and responsibilities are um, destined to be entangled in civilian pursuits. Um, but that, that, that's not what God has for us because you and I and everybody else were made for so much more than just that. We're made for and kingdom so, purpose. Exactly. Yeah, so I love that, Shasta. Kind of, yeah. Well, you know, when you're reading that, it's so well thought out. And when I was thinking about, you know, when you were reading that, about the culture shock you experienced coming back to America, um, you know, you're not called to live in Mexico, at least no, not right now. No. You're called to be here. <laughs> Exactly. I'm called to be here, and there's a purpose for that. Mm -hmm. And and I think that um, you know we can long for other things and think, well, I want to be in a place where the Lord is exalted, and, and that's all they have. And but we're called to be here, and He puts these, He inflames mm -hmm. our hearts for this kind of awareness, so that we can transform people here, mm -hmm. the church. Can you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. this is He He did, He kindled your heart, and and He is 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 um you know working in your heart stirring. right now, stirring, stirring. your stirring. heart, and, and fanning that fire. You mm -hmm. know, and um, because he wants you to to make an impact here, you I know, agree. and and so we're not called. You know, heaven is our home, but we're called to live out life here on earth. Have you ever heard "Temporary Home" by Carrie Underwood? I I think I have. <laughs> I I I think I have. And you know, I I start to laugh at that because really everything here is temporary. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, to go back to what I was saying before we you know went to commercial was that where I am with God right now is. Um, I need to be right with God. I think everybody needs to be. But there's really no time to wait because um, going back to in December, my uncle, uh, he was not a believer. Um, he didn't want anything really to do with God. Um, but I, I figured that, you know, I didn't want to push it on him because yeah. I feel like when you push it on people, it just it cuts off that whole, just mm -hmm. the whole option. Turn them you know? off. Yeah, yeah, it really does. And uh, so I knew that God would open up a time for me to be able to speak the word of God to him. And um, he actually went missing for eight days. And two days before he went missing, um, he was having relationship problems and uh, anger issues. Angry, you know, easily angered, I guess you could say. And he thought he needed pills and doctors and all these different kinds of things. And I was like, no, you don't. No, you don't, because I was like, those are worldly things, too. I said, you can't rely on those type of things. And I was like, sure, you know, obviously some people have, like, super medical conditions and stuff like that, that they, they need, need those, yeah. those type of things. But mm -hmm. I was like, but, you know, there's other ways. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be transformed. You can be restored. And I said, your relationship can be restored. And I said, you're not focusing on the right things whatsoever. I said, yeah, sure, there's bills and family issues and all these different types of things. But if you guys aren't both fixed on the same thing, then it's not going to work. It's not going to be restored. It's not going to be, you know, in a good place and everything. But um, anyways, so he ended up giving his life to God um, before he went missing, and uh, after you the said day two day days, search. right? Yeah, two days before. Yeah. Okay, let's stop there. <laughs> I, I don't want people to miss the story. So I'm gonna stop you. Okay. We're gonna take a break. Do return to can hear. This is a pretty amazing story. Stay tuned.
You're watching your local television network, TSPN. And now back to Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. Welcome back, and I'm here with Shasta, and um, we're talking about, um, before you went, to, we went to break, you were talking about your uncle, mm -hmm. who um, ended up being missing for eight days, but before he was missing, you had a conversation with him, and he was he received Jesus as the Savior. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and uh, that was actually the last conversation I had with him, and we ended up getting a phone call that he was missing, and he was supposed to go to his first 49ers game the next day, like his first one. He was a diehard 49er fan. Um, but he went missing, and it turned into a huge search and rescue. And uh, we weren't getting the proper help we needed from... Um, the authorities, yes. we'll say. Yeah, <laughs> we, we just, we weren't mm -hmm. at all. And uh, it, was, it was really frustrating. It really was. And uh, he was found on the eighth day deceased in a car accident. And was it, it was a single car accident? Mm -hmm. Okay. He went off the road, um, Highway 80. Okay. Yeah, okay. and there's just so much behind it, but I just wanted to really point out the blessings um, that really came out of it, like a huge search and rescue organization that has opened up um, for families if, you know, their loved ones go missing and if authorities aren't helping and if they don't have the proper things, um, drones. Yeah. Drones, drones are incredible. Yeah. Um, they would have probably found my uncle if we were looking in the right place. Yeah. Right. Uh, he honestly crashed. Um, he was like a two-hour distance from each other, mm -hmm. and he crashed about five minutes before he got to his house. Oh, wow. Um, you know what? That's so interesting. I mean, weird to say interesting, but I read so many reports that say that most accidents mm -hmm. uh, happen within five miles of your home. Which is weird. If it, or seven miles of your home, something like that, but really close to your home. That's crazy. Isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah, and he was the type of person that would take back roads. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, well, let's just say that one time that he actually listened to his girlfriend, <laughs> you know, his fiance, and, um, yeah, he, he, he took the freeway. But um, there's just, like I said, there's just so many blessings, and it has really um, grown my dad's walk with God. And well, you said that you said that there were some family issues, and now yeah, as a yeah, there was, they're there more was. united now um, as a result. Without of a doubt, it's um, stronger than it's ever been, mm -hmm. and it's sad that those type of things have to happen. Yeah. But I uh, do believe that he did take that, and he made it into a beautiful message and something beautiful. And I love sharing that. Um, you know, God softened his heart before he took my uncle. Yeah. Um, because I think that's so important. Um, you know, that was the time. That's that, was, that was the time. Yeah. And like I said, when I look at it, I just, I get, I get chills thinking about it because I know that um, my uncle that I just dearly love so much is with my Lord and Savior right now. Mm -hmm. And um, it actually comforts me yeah, because absolutely. I used to, I used to not look at that whatsoever. Um, but now I'm just completely... Um, Content. I think content's the right word. I'm satisfied with you have a piece about where, it. where we are. Yeah. It reminds me of Romans 8:28, where we know that mm -hmm. in all things God works together for good for those yeah. who love Him and are called according to His purpose. And yeah. that's an example. Yeah. So let's get to um, you know I don't want to some of the stuff. Time. Yeah. <laughs> so you so you've been so you went to your mission trip and God really was stirring your heart about being um, being His hands and feet and not just through words but through mm -hmm. actions and really loving people, meeting them where they are, not leaving them there, and all those things. Mm -hmm. And then you come back and you get this book, right? Yeah. And, um, I actually just got that about two weeks ago. Did you? Not long okay, ago. okay. And it's just everywhere I go, those words keep popping up. Follow me. Like, what did Jesus really mean when he said follow So what me? does it mean to you to follow Jesus? Oh, my goodness. What does it mean? It means a lot of things. It first means um, you have to be willing. It's, it's free will. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, Christianity nowadays, we've taken the lifeblood of Christianity, filled it with Kool-Aid to, um, you know, make it more tangible and um, more edible. tasteful, mm -hmm. edible uh, to the crowds. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel like that's where I was. Mm -hmm. um, and going back to following, you know, God, you need to completely die in yourself for him to live in you. What does it mean to die to yourself? I'm going to something. <laughs> <laughs> notes here. Uh, well, not notes, but I have like... Um, I have so many notes. <laughs> um, that's dead to sin. Okay, so I want to talk about taking up the cross and follow me, because mm -hmm. that's kind of what everything. So it says, um, so I want to begin with like what Jesus didn't mean when he said to take up the cross. So many people interpret the cross as a burden that they must carry, you know, all the sin and everything like that, um, a strained relationship, uh, losing a job, things like that, you know, having burden that you have to carry. Um, but that's, you know, self-pity and pride because, um, you know, that's the cross I have to carry. Um, so what it meant was, you know, what it used to meant was, um, you know, torture death. 
Mm-hmm. That's what the cross usually means. Being meant. crucified is Yeah, yeah. and that was mm-hmm. like 2,000 years ago. Um, but now it's a symbol of forgiveness and grace and love. Mm-hmm. But in Jesus' day, like I said, um, it was a representation of torturous death um, because the Romans forced convicted criminals to carry their own crosses to place the, of the crucifixion. Um, and so what, therefore, take up the cross and follow me means being willing to die in order to follow Jesus. Mm-hmm. And... Um, this is called dying to self, and it's a call to absolutely surrender everything to God. Mm-hmm. And after each time Jesus commanded cross-bearing, he said, for, every, uh, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it. Mm-hmm. A mm-hmm. call to die, a call to live. Mm-hmm. But whoever loses his life for me will save it. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what is good, it is for man to gain the whole world and yet lose um, for himself. So what he's saying is that if you don't completely die in yourself, you're not living for Christ. Which is a choice to die to self. Because exactly. a choice to uh, be persecuted with, with, with Christ is mm-hmm. to, is to or be, I'm sorry, to be crucified with Christ is to uh, make a decision to mm-hmm. not pursue worldly things. Exactly. It's to make a decision to not follow your pride, to make a decision to not hold on to um, bitterness and resentment mm-hmm. towards people. It's making a decision to, it's not something that magically happens. We have to exercise our will to be uh-huh. in alignment with God's will. And I feel like, you know, as soon as you really, you know, start dying to yourself, you have to die to yourself every single day. Minute, minute um, by minute sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like, you know, when Christ um, is truly living in you, you'll really start to see that transformation. But not only you, but the people around you will start seeing that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really incredible because I feel like that's kind of where I am, the mm-hmm. transformation process. And I, everything that I do is starting to ro- ro- revolve around God, like, Everything, everything in my mind, my desires, my hopes, my dreams, everything is uh, what God wants for me, God's will. I think it's incredible. So um, so if you wonder if you are ready to take up the cross, um, I want people to consider these questions. Um, because walking with God is not going to be easy. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's not. Because you have to surrender and give everything to God. You... Um, you can't be worried about giving up the worldly things. Mm-hmm. If God said, get rid of your cell phone, would you give it up? I mean, mm-hmm. you have to be willing to suffer the things um, to fully, completely give your life to God. So are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing some of your closest friends? Mm-hmm. Because it happens. Mm-hmm. Jesus, and you know, one of the things that he didn't promise us is um, that it was going to be easy. That was not a promise that he made. He said he'll never forsake us um, and things like that, but he didn't promise that the world was going to love us because mm-hmm. we're not of this world. Um, he, he says, in this world, you will have trouble. Yeah, I wrote But take heart, you will overcome. Yeah. Right? Very and um, so are you willing to be um, alienated from your family? Mm-hmm. There's going to be lots of family members that don't have the same beliefs in you or um, don't have the same mindset as you. And uh, so that can really, you know, tear you apart from some family. And um, if it, you know, would you still follow Jesus if it meant to... Um, lost your, and like lose your reputation, mm-hmm. the reputation that you have? Are you willing to, you know, get rid of that reputation that you have and fully follow Christ? Because mm-hmm. it does take these type of things. You have to be willing to do these things. Um, I'm not saying that it will happen, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. if it happens, you have to be willing to suffer those costs to completely live in Christ. And um, are you willing to lose your job? Are mm-hmm. you willing to completely, you know, um, look at God to provide for you? Are you um, and if it means losing your life, are you willing to lose your life to surrender everything to God? Literally your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. a call to die, a call to live. We are called to die because right now we're all dead. Mm-hmm. We are all dead. Um, but I feel like most people nowadays, even like Christians, and I say like Christians, as um, a lot of us don't know the true meaning of what God meant to follow me. And he, th- we mostly don't know the true meaning of what it means to be a disciple mm-hmm. because, uh, like I said, the Kool-Aid. We've mm-hmm. taken little things from the Bible and we've made it into something that will be more tangible for people that, um, you know, hear it or see it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, it's not, it's not a simple prayer um, to be saved. It's not a simple prayer to, you know, go to his kingdom. Um, so I really want on people's hearts is that um, you're, you're, walking, you're walking dead right now. <laughs> you're walking dead. <laughs> no, no, we really are because there's so much more to life than what we see at the moment. There's mm-hmm. just so much more. And uh, we are called to make disciples. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it's really important to not only show people through um, your words, but also through your actions. Mm-hmm. Um, so we don't look like hypocrites because yeah. that's definitely something that I feel um, that a lot of people who uh, you know don't believe in God or things like that, they think that Christianity, that we're hypocrites. Mm-hmm. And it's because 
of um, the people who are lukewarm, mm -hmm. lukewarm mm -hmm. Christians, and, yeah. and that, that's the reason right there. Um, and so maybe you want to. Well, I was going <laughs> to say, you know, the, you know, people mistakenly think, and maybe it's because Christians we portray, portray ourselves as being righteous, and we are righteous in Christ, but sometimes we come across as self-righteous, yeah. and so then we people think that we think we're perfect, and then when we're not perfect and we stumble, people go, "See, I thought you were supposed to be a Christian," and so then it's just, you know, what I'm saying so. Yeah. People need to realize that we struggle just like anyone struggles oh, as yes. believers. We have the same hurts, the same trials, the same struggles, and all those things. But one thing that I'm hearing through what you're saying is that, you know, we have a choice to repent, which is turn away from those things and turn to God. Mm -hmm. We have we have a we have a opportunity to um, to choose. We our religion, our, our I don't like to use the word religion. Me neither. Our faith, our relationship with the Lord yeah. is a two-way street. We do really get empowered is. by the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely, we do. He dwells within us. However, we also have a responsibility in this relationship, and which is to turn. And that turning is when, from my experience, when I'm turning away from the sin or turning towards the Lord, that's when I'm in His power. You know, um, He's not just going to wave a magic wand and say, oh, Heather, now you can resist temptation. He he's expects me to do my part. It's a choice. And he gives us that choice to glorify and honor him. And we, a lot of times we use our free will in much different I ways. I agree. Um, so as we die to ourselves, we live in him. And he will give us a new heart and cleanse us of sin and fill us with his spirit. And he will give us a new mind and, um, and a, an entirely new way of thinking. And he gives us new desires, um, entirely new way of thinking. He gives us... Um, you know, new senses of longing, and uh, he also gives us a new will, an entirely new way of living. Mm -hmm. And so, I guess when we get back, we can yeah, talk about exactly. We're gonna take a break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay tuned. You're watching your local television network, TSPN, and now back to Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. And we are back, and this is the final segment of Love, Hope, and Faith. And you, if you have been enjoying today's program like I have, and you want to catch other episodes of Love, Hope, and Faith, then you can go to tspntv.com, and there is all the programming is displayed on the website. Uh, the TSPN has all kinds of other shows, and Love, Hope, and Faith is there. You can catch all the older episodes. Plus, you can go to YouTube, and uh, YouTube, Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch, that mm -hmm. way as well. Plus, I have a, a blog, heathermurdoch.com, and also I'm on Facebook, yeah. <laughs> um, which is... Um, Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch on Facebook, you and know how so crazy you can get around. I know, I know. It's, but you know, I, I just really you. want to get. I just really want to get out. I want to make God famous. You know, yeah. that's what it's all about. I and, agree. I'm um, on a mission for that too. Yeah, so exactly. We'll see where that goes. And so, while you were speaking today, one of the scriptures, because you're talking about being transformed, and of course, Romans 12:2, do not conform any longer. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, perfect, and pleasing will. And I love that verse. It's one of my life verses because, um, like you said, you said it earlier, Shasta, we have to die to self every day. We have to renew our minds every day. We have to be constantly taking every thought captive. If we want that freedom that Christ has promised that's available to us as followers of him, then we have to take our thoughts captive. And that's what you've been talking about today. We have to stop pursuing the world and start pursuing him, taking thoughts captive, giving him the glory, living for mm -hmm. him, you know, all those things. I think it's funny. I don't know why this popped in my head, but um, I've, I've talked to, I, I, let's just say I know a lot of atheists, um, but they've asked me, you know, well, if God is, you know, so powerful and almighty, then why did, why did he give us a choice? Why didn't he just make us love him? Because that love would not, not be love. the same. That no. is not love. That's no. like zombies. That's, yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. No, we're, we're not meant for that. Mm -hmm. That's why we have free will. That's why, um, but he made people like us to go out and be his disciples to mm -hmm. make him more, dis you know, have more disciples. And I just, I think it's funny. I don't know why that popped in my head, like mm -hmm. I said. But, um, free will. Free will mm -hmm. is incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. just like the freedom we have here in America. Mm -hmm. Um, you need to be doing good things with that freedom. Yes. Um. It's, it's, it's true love. True love is always 
um, associated with freedom and choice, freedom of choice. And so Vulnerable. God, yeah, God would not make us a bunch of, like you said, zombies or robots. That's not mm -hmm. love. That's control and manipulation. Yeah. He, he loves us so much that he gave us His free will. And, and, and think <laughs> about amazing how amazing it is that we have a choice to love God with our whole hearts, minds, strengths, strength, <laughs> strength, uh, with all our whole self, that we can love him that way. And when we choose to do that, the reward, like you said, the blessings, the fullness of life, yeah. the the um, the the joy, the peace, the freedom, all those things are associated with that choice. It's amazing. I think the grace that God has for us is mm -hmm. it's just so unfathomable. It really is because if you think about it, there are so many people that turn away from God or um, who are lukewarm mm -hmm. and they're not denying themselves. They're still living for the world. Mm -hmm. um, they're not living for God. There's just so many different things and. God still loves us. Even the people who don't accept Him or oh, care yeah. about Him, He loves them so um, profoundly. He just loves them so deeply. And I just, like I said, that is just, it's an incredible feeling to know that uh, no matter where you are, love, hope, and faith, no matter where you are in life, no, no matter what you've been through, um, no matter your thoughts in your head or the temptations that you, you know, you've been through, any of that, he will love you the same. We're not, and, um, yeah, we're not defined by what happened to us. Yeah. We're not defined by what we've done. We're not defined by the hurts that we carry. We're not defined by the baggage or the labels that people have put on us or the labels that we put on ourselves. We're defined by the love of Christ, our creator. And that's freedom. Really you know what I'm is. saying? That's freedom. So, yeah. yeah. Good. Okay, I know. We're going to go to your notes. So um, you well, about really, transformation. Yeah, I you know? think um, just the changes that, you know, God's, uh, God does, like even in my life right now, I can feel it. Um, yeah. I've been reading a lot in the book that we were talking about. Yeah. Um, but his love is just so profound and everlasting. Well, he um, is love. You know, is, that's the is. thing. He is love. And so he doesn't... I read... A, a, I'm reading a book, too. It's called... Um, um, the Atheist Christian. Or The Christian Atheist. The Christian Atheist, yeah. yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> anyway, it's really good, and by Greg Groeschel. He's an awesome author and pastor and really a transformational book. But anyway, and so he was sharing that who does God love? Everyone, okay. So boil that down. What does that really mean? What does everyone mean? It's such a big word. It's so broad. It's not very specific. So you can start with every letter of the alphabet, like A. He loves Arabs. <laughs> he loves, he loves, um, he loves, um, Apple, no, I mean not apples. Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think, is, I blew my example here, but he loves, um, you know, I'm trying to think of people that start with A. Um, he loves, help me out here, A. Um, um, a he loves atheists. Yeah, he, loves, he does. You know, he loves, yeah, he loves, he loves. He loves believers. Yeah, oh, there we go, loves. that's B, yeah. But I mean, you could go through the list. I wish I could think right now of all the A's, because there's a lot of, actually a lot of letters that start with A. But anyway, or a lot of words that start with A. But he loves if you go through the alphabet, he loves everybody. He really Even does. Even the people that you can't stand and that are mean to you. I know. And that, you know, that are, that are hard on you, that are difficult to deal with. He loves them, too. And, and I think that uh, definitely a transformation process is mm -hmm. forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there's so many people, and it's hard to accept, like, murderers or people like that. that mm -hmm. God loves them so much. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for you to, you're like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, but, and then you think, like, well, I mean, um, his love for everybody's the same, no, no matter where you've been or yeah. anything like that. And uh, I think that that's hard for people to accept sometimes. Like, it is. Like, I've done this and this and this. Like, how, how could he love me? How could he? He does. He really does. He sent his one and only son to die on the cross for you so he can have a personal, deep relationship with you. He wants to get to know you, even though he already knew you in the womb and everything. But he really does. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. It's mm -hmm. so deeply and profound. And, um, he wants to know you. Yeah. And he wants you to know him. When you yeah. know someone, when you really know someone, like a best friend, if you think about someone in your life who's your best friend, who you tell everything to someone that you tell your deepest yeah. darkest secrets you guys trust each other there's you share your hurts and your joys and your hopes and all those things like you know each other like do you have a relationship with someone you can finish their thoughts oh or like God. you know like yeah. you just like with my Too husband <laughs> I can just I know what he's thinking if we're in a, a room and we're separated and we're like maybe yeah, you know at a party or something with with friends and we're separate I know what he's thinking you know what I'm saying and yeah. that's how God is but even more so he he know he wants to know us at that level. I mean, he does, but he wants us to know him. Yeah, it's an know, incredible feeling to know yeah. that he has that much, that much for desire us. for yeah. us. But the fact is, like you said, Shasta, he is love. And so, um, when when you talked earlier about being on a mission trip and not being able to communicate with people verbally, um, with words because of the language barrier, you showed the love of Christ through your actions, and that's what we're all called to do, no matter where your mission field is, whether Even it's your neighbor. Me. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whether it's scrubbing the toilet, yeah, exactly. Whatever washing windows. The act yeah. is that you're doing, like you said, the task. We can do it with the love of Christ, and it can be transformational. I believe it's it's not even the task that is given to you. Mm -hmm. It's the way um, you go about doing it. Mm -hmm. If you go in with a servant's heart, um, it is rewarding. It really is, and I don't want people to focus on the rewarding things, but. Um, even the slightest little thing you do, it has so many rewards behind it for other people that you might not even see. Just a yeah. little simple task. Mm -hmm. God is working. God is working behind the scenes, which is incredible. I mean, mm -hmm. I want I want God on a uh, drive in my life. I don't want to be in the front wheel. I'm going to be the one to crash it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I, I trust him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. He's in the driver's seat. Yeah. yeah. Thank exactly. goodness, right? Exactly. <laughs> so what do you think, you know, as being, you know, you're young, you're, you're a sophomore? Junior, senior, junior. Okay, you know, so you're going to graduate little. a little early. Yeah. So, um, you know, what are some challenges that you face in sharing your faith with your peer group? Oh, my goodness. Um, I feel like there's lots of peer pressures. We actually just, um, we had a message on it in the youth group. Uh, I definitely think there's lots of uh, peer pressures for teens nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, uh, acceptance is one. Mm -hmm. uh, and being, uh, having different mindset from people. I think going on homeschool, um, not necessarily, you know, getting away from the world or anything like that, but it has definitely helped me to really, you know, fix my eyes on God. It's not that I don't deal with the, you know, worldly things anymore, because I, I do. I still deal with temptations and things like that. Um, I think teens really have to, and even me, um, Relationships, relationships nowadays with guys and things like that. Um, it is a distraction. Mm -hmm. It definitely is, and I feel like that's a huge temptation for teens nowadays. And um, there's actually this demonstration. Um, so picture two people. There's one on a pedestal, and there's one person on the ground. So imagine trying to get this. Um, so I'm talking about like relationships that you know one person doesn't really believe in God, doesn't have the same relationship, and then you are up here on the pedestal. Well, you're mm -hmm. on the pedestal, they're on the ground, and imagine like me trying to pick up a guy. I have to hold his hand, like grip it, and try bringing him up on the pedestal with me. That's not going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. If he takes my arm and pulls me down, how fast is it going to take me to get down? I stumble. Yeah. I stumble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not one huge step to get away from God, but you slowly stumble out mm -hmm. of it, and it's easier to stumble away from it than it is to bring people with you. And so I think it's really important to have a balanced relationship with anybody. I'm talking about friends, if you don't surround yourself by the right people and things like that, you're going to stumble. Yeah. Um, Especially at this age. And so I think, think that's mm -hmm. the main thing is, um, you know, acceptance and hanging out with the wrong crowds. And uh, I feel like, you know, um, even relationships, there's, there's a lot of relationships, you know, uh, temptations and peer pressure and things like that. Oh, you'd be so cute with this person and everything. And, uh, you know, God has uh, really fixed my heart on a lot of those things. And um, I don't want like, to go into depth with all that. Um, but I uh, met Just this keeping your focus on him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, I think that there's a danger in young women, but for all of us, too, that we can, uh, speaking of men and women, mm -hmm. we can put our value on what the man thinks of us, the boy yeah. thinks of us. The, oh, the boy thinks I'm pretty. I oh, don't you care feel about that fantastic. <laughs> you know, oh, I'm, you know, it's like, he's so dreamy. It makes me feel so good about myself. And, you know, and, and then when the boy says, you're not pretty or, you know, or I don't want you, you down. then tears you down, then you, you think you're nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to teach that foundation of identity in Christ, you know, uh, from your age and younger, mm -hmm. as women, we need to know who we really are in Christ so that we don't allow the world to tell us who we are. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And the one thing with transformation, I even see it, like, the last few days, it's crazy, because I'll be in a conversation with someone, like I said, all this revolving around me is God, 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 like, everything. Um, my mindset is completely changing the way um, I don't care about acceptance from other people. I just, I mean, I know I'm accepted by God, but... I, I want to please Him. I want to mm -hmm. do everything in His glory. I want to um, to live my life for God. I want mm -hmm. Christ to live in me. Um, I want to die every single day to myself. Um, I I want to deny myself. I mm -hmm. want to live in Him. So, because um, I don't think there's any way to live life better than uh, living it for God. Yeah, exactly. That's it. The fulfillment, like you said, it's not about the getting the blessings, but no. blessing does come. Um, God wants to bless us. Mm -hmm. He wants he, really to, he wants us to, to experience joy. He wants to, just like any good parent wants to give to their children, that's how God is with us. I look at it you as know. adopting. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, exactly. you know, there's lots of people that don't know, but he mm -hmm. already has it in his mind that he wants to, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. give us the love um, that we don't have yet. So. Well, we only have
have like 30 seconds left, but I just really, I'm being praying for you, Shasta. Be praying for your ministry and praying for you as a young believer. And I personally don't like to use the word Christian or believer even. Believer's <laughs> fine, either. but I like to use the word follower, like that book says, yeah, because, follow me. you know, follow is action. And so let's follow the Lord and let's help, um, let's allow him to use us to transform the world and not be transformed by the world, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's a big difference. So yeah. thank you for being on my show today. Thank you for inviting You're awesome. me. It's I totally love you. Yeah, totally, you. yes, it was great. You're an awesome Praise guest. God and for I that appreciate one. you. And um, I hope you have a great week and we'll see you next week. And I am always praying for you. Stay tuned. Oh.